panel discussion on talent acquisition. May I now invite to the desk moderator Dr. Lena Rajay, Director, HR and Administration, Nikem Solutions. Panel members Dr. Devin Shah, Principal, Sri L. R. Tiwari College of Engineering. Dr. Smita Shukla, Professor and Director, Alkesh Dinesh Modi Institute and Director, IQAC University of Mumbai. Dr. Nitin Joshi, Director, BRIMS. Dr. V. N. Bedekar, Institute of Management Studies, Thane. Dr. S. K. Ukarande, Principal, K. J. Somaya, College of Engineering and Dean, Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Somaya Vidya Vihar University. I request uh, all of you to please be seated. Check, check. Good morning. Good morning to all the ST members gathered over here for today's conclave. So, I, Dr. Lina so. Rajay, heading the HR and administration of my own family business, Nikem Solutions. Express my deepest gratitude to BCCI and especially organizers of today's conclave for inviting me to moderate this session on talent acquisition. Before joining Nikem Solutions, I was principal of a good, well-known autonomous college for many years. And probably having witnessed both the sides of the process of talent acquisition, I feel that I can understand the gravity of this situation. As all of us know, talent acquisition has always been a major problem in our country and especially so in the industries. And always the colleges are blamed for not giving the right resource to the industries. But as I said that I have witnessed both the sides of this challenge. And now when I have joined my own family business, I realize that getting the right uh, talent is difficult because there are certain sets of problems from this side. This platform is created for a right purpose. That as an educationist, we all must realize what are the problems that are faced by the SMEs and how can we contribute in resolving this issue of recruiting the right talents. This topic is of great importance because Indian economy has witnessed rapid growth in the recent times. And if you take a closer look at the last two decades, maximum growth is seen in the service sector, especially the BPO and IT. But of course, along with agriculture. Now, SME being the backbone of Indian economy, we have to continue giving the feeder, that is the human resource to the industries. And therefore, this problem has to be tackled from both the sides. Before I uh, open the discussion of today's uh, topic, I just want to say that unless the college, colleges move ahead and understand the job market situation and the SMEs come one step ahead, there cannot be a proper collaborative efforts from both the sides and there is no hope for the job market situation to improve. Fortunately, today's panel members are all from renowned educational institutions and one uh, common uh, feature that I can say talk about all of us, I mean I am including myself on both the sides I should say. <laughs> so common feature is that we are in a demanding position as well as commanding position. Why demanding? Because we demand as an educational head, institutional head. We demand so many things and we get so many things done. But we are in a commanding position to our institutions as well as to the job markets. So before introducing all of you, I wanted to ascertain this point that whatever we discussion we have, more or less on this topic there will be uh, common features and common questions which any one of you can take up 
so if you want a specific question to be answered by specific person you can let me know otherwise more or less uh, we all can answer all these questions so i am now introducing the panel members and i will do this job very briefly because your biodata is running pages and you can add some things if you want to add of course wherever whatever significance you feel so the first uh, member on the panel is dr devin shah with a good academic background of doctorate in technology and engineering mtech in information technology and be in electronics and telecommunication he has served as principal of shri l r tiwari college of engineering and also has been a chairman board of studies in information technology in the university of mumbai what a powerful position he had with his rich experience i feel he is an appropriate panelist for today's session professor dr smita shukla with a masters in economics mba in finance and phd in management is a great addition to this panel madam has been uh, in a significant position of director iqac that is uh, internal quality assurance cell of various institutions so that this is a mandatory cell in every institution so she has been heading this cell in M university of mumbai that's a very powerful position i would say also as honorary director western regional center icssr indian council of social science and research and also professor and director of alkesh dinesh modi institute for financial and management studies i am sure she will be able to contribute lot of thoughts on today's topic dr nitin joshi with masters degree in industrial engineering management and phd in management has more than 25 years of rich and varied experience in sales and marketing with industry leaders and we don't definitely cannot have better panelists than him for this purpose he is presently director at dr v n bedekar institute of management studies and professor in operations at wellinger institute of management mumbai i am sure he must have handled recruitments at various levels so he will be a good uh, contributor of thoughts today dr s k ukrande an mtech and phd in civil engineering from iit mumbai and principal of kj somaiya college of engineering he has also been former dean faculty of science and technology at the university of mumbai with 37 years of rich experience in higher education leadership and actively contributing to various statutory bodies during the past 20 years <coughs> i have full confidence that his active involvement will be very helpful to resolve our concerns today so as i mentioned earlier looking at the power of this panel i think uh, we should be able to arrive at some good concrete dialogues today and that will definitely help the smes so initiating the session the questions first and foremost i would like to understand from any one of you that having a young population looking for quality jobs in today's market as a head of the educational institution how do you see this job market please go ahead ma'am uh, so ma'am i um, have had a chance of interacting with the young students uh who are looking for placement reason being i am heading an institution and i am also director iqac where somewhere with other departments also the interaction happens so when we are looking at the trend and and the uh, uh, expressions which are coming from the side of a students uh one thing which is becoming very clear with every passing uh, year is uh that when we talk about employer branding and uh, big names uh, when you refer to companies you know which are well known companies that is not the context remaining anymore so when uh, students are looking out for their first job what they are looking out for is while holding that position once they are into the industry while holding that position what kind of learning they will be able to have so that they can leverage that 
for the next job. So one, students want a good start, but that good start need not be a well-known name. For them, what is more important is the job description, the job profile, and the learning which will happen there. Another uh, 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 thing which I have observed is that uh, while we talk about uh, this difference between that industry says that we are not getting the right talent and we say that we have a pool of students which we have to offer, uh, there is a still difference in uh, perception or expectation matching when we talk about the salary offers which are being made and the students are now very, very clear. So even if they're not coming from very premier institutions, say for example, we are not discussing IITs here and IIMs here. Right. Even if they're not coming from very premier institutions, they are expecting some base level salary. And in case if the offer is below that base level salary, they just do not apply. And which is becoming a challenge for us on the campus. They say we will, we will do it on our own then we don't need help of the campus placement cell. Can you help us to cross this benchmark? Then only we will be willing to make a uh, uh, no, uh, cut for in terms of no, our resume being uh, shared for this industry requirement. So this is the feeling, trend I'm getting, uh, just to answer you very briefly. Yes. Anybody else wants to contribute? Uh, so good morning and uh, first of all, thanks uh, to you and uh, the Bombay Chambers uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I think uh, I'll have a little slightly different view. Uh, there are different sets of students in every institution and I have say close to 180 students. So some set of students would be looking for brands. Uh, they would be looking for brands like ICICI, Hindustan Lever or all those brands and big package, large corporate, multinational company. So there is a set of students. There is another set of student who is okay with uh, some medium brands and uh, not some high funda brands and there is another set of students who is okay with a job. So these are the three sets uh, uh, we have. And when we, when we are looking at uh, MSMEs and not so branded companies currently, probably uh, there is a decent set of students, uh, would be around 60-70 uh, students uh, who would be getting into that kind of role. And uh, what I personally see is, um, see what are they looking forward for? Uh, and where is the gap which I have seen that? See, when um, an interview is happening, the expectation is that students should be ready from day one. This is the expectation and there is nothing wrong in that expectation. Because you know, time is money and uh, we all understand uh, from the uh, cash flow perspective. Uh, but I think uh, the need is that uh, the culture of the student, he is not, for him, for most of our students who are into that 60 uh, range, uh, they are Expectation is that there is a need to groom, to be groomed in the system for at least for I think two to three months because they need to adapt that culture and most of the time when they are not getting that kind of training or getting groomed, they start you know looking for something else. So they feel highly pressurized in that kind of environment and I think I don't know but the, the coming gen is little low on stress taking. So they able to take uh, too much of stress. This is my, in terms of learning also, and if you put too much of pressure, uh, there is some challenge with them. So uh, we will have to give them some time uh, to get adapted to your uh, MSMEs, uh, allow them some learning. They are good learners, uh, they are very sharp in terms of digital, uh, more sharper than us in terms of uh, digital understanding and uh, probably handling digital gadgets. But in terms of uh, say listening, learning, probably and they would have their own ways. Probably our was like the way I am told, I should be learning your way. So probably they have their own ways. These are the new challenges. And we are seeing this in, in, in during learning also, during teaching also. So probably take back my teaching method was different, but now I have to be, uh, I have to change myself. So these changes are there. Aspirations are very high. Comparisons are very high. So these kind of things are bigger challenges when I see, uh, you know, the, the students. So sir, in this connection, um, I would like to pose a question in front of all of you that can this grooming be started right from the day the student enters the college? Institution can play a very big role in grooming the child and that can also be done with the help of 
SMEs. So what what are your uh, takes on that? I mean, any one of you can answer this. Yeah. Um, see, I am very clear that um, see the way we see abroad. Uh, most of the institutes are leading the way and industry is the follower. Unfortunately, in <laughs> India, industry is leading and education is following. So this is the biggest challenge. Yes. So to address this challenge, my request is if we have some collaborative efforts, means I am ready to extend my hand now also. And if there are industries who are ready to shake hands with me, we are ready to develop students competencies what are required by you but we should know what is the exact requirement coming in from your end so in the absence of that we do what we have been doing and whatever we read from the economic times or ascent that these are the current skill set now based on that we pick up some skill set and we try to groom them but unfortunately the change uh, no, the change is happening uh, faster than we are anticipating. And therefore, whatever we are doing, probably industry says, Aapka bachcha hamare liye employable nahi hai. So, <laughs> so, that gap is a continuous gap. So, we need to bridge that gap. And I mean, so I have been uh, visiting COSIA, TISA, uh, all the associations uh, pertaining to, you know, SMEs and MSMEs. But there is a challenge, I think. Uh, so, this challenge we need to address. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Shah, can you uh, further ponder over and tell us what can be done so far as employability of the student is concerned? How can we make them more employable? So, from last 10 years, I am instrumentally designing the syllabus for information technology part for the University of Kuwait. The first thing is, in my seventh semester, we have a subject called AIML which is very hot. And that subject is there from 2016 onwards. My 57, 62, sir, 62 engineering college, their students in their seventh semester are giving theory exam worth 100 marks. Where they attempt at this study all the AI ML algorithms, all type of neural networks as a part of the syllabus. The problem is, they do theory, they know the algorithms. In practical also, in the lab, they work on a very small data set. That is a problem. We don't get data set. So this is a perspective. Second thing is, now anybody is aware of that how fast college or universities working on the implementation of NEP 2020. So NEP 2020, the University of Mumbai and across all Maharashtra University, they are working at the bullet speed. So entire talent acquisition concept is going to be totally going to be changed. Number one, NEP clearly says there is a multiple entry and multiple exit. That means, after first year also students can leave by getting the certification course or after second year also they can take from the diploma course. Now let's connect with the MSME requirement. MSME can come to my campus, they can select the students from the second year. They say I want immediate this person in the job, I will pay X amount of salary. Then students say sir, can I leave and do the job for a one year and then I will come back as a part of academic bank credit and I will continue my studies. That is, that is there, that is allowed. So you don't need a graduate to get recruited. The students will be trained based on your requirement. On the job training and the internship is part of the curriculum credits. It's compulsory, it's mandatory. And the last thing, as per the government of India's directive, in engineering college, skill component, vocational skill component is now part of the engineering college uh, curriculum. So we have a skill enhancement course as a part of the curriculum and we have ability enhancement course as a part of the curriculum. So NEP 2020 at the University of Mumbai level from next academic year, every single college has to adopt. And that is what we are into. Thank you. So how this 
NEP NEP 2020 is the new education policy which we have implemented now, and that as sir just now explained that uh, opens the door for many students to take up lateral courses, to take up skill based courses, to be more employable. But running the new education policy in colleges has also created lot of infrastructural problems and a lot of problems in getting the right kind of faculty and orienting the students in the right direction. So, uh, Dr. Ukarande, can you uh, just yeah. guide us on how to run this NEP so that students become more employable at MSMEs? Yeah, I'll, I'll come to NEP in the second part. First of all, I mean the curriculum which is which through which we have studied in the university system in the various colleges. When I joined this profession in 1986, that time, uh, being a teacher, we have to teach uh, what is given in the curriculum syllabus to the students. And that time I was thinking, from where this curriculum comes? From this, who prepares this syllabus? Mm. That's all. I mean, university prepares the syllabus. But who? And the responsibility came to me directly for preparing the syllabus of civil engineering as a chairman board of strategy in 2003 and for whole of the university system, University of Mumbai from 2012 onwards being a dean faculty of technology. There are various disciplines uh, across uh, University of Mumbai, UG, PG and even PhD. Around uh, uh, 17 UG courses, more than 25-30 uh, PG courses and all that. So the responsibility was on me. It's not that me alone will prepare the syllabus, but it's the structure. Faculty of Technology, then Board of Studies, Chairman Board of Studies, members, who are the members, the academicians, the industry experts, even alumni, even bright students of the institute in the colleges. So collectively, each Board of Study prepare the syllabus and implement. And now uh, the question is, we talk about uh, the national education policy, the components. So the components, I'll, brief, I'll say it uh, very in a couple of, uh, one minute or so. The engineering curriculum, right from the first year to final year, it's a basic sciences, some component, engineering sciences, some component, core subject, some component, and elective courses in the specific domain, some component, and generic subjects, the institute level, this, the, all students should study, that's called that component. This is the heart of, I mean, the curriculum as such, and along with that, the minor project, mini project, minor project, or major projects. I mean, uh, at this generation, which is, I mean, my, my generation or your generation, what we have studied is the, the curriculum theory, what is taught in class, doing some practicals in the laboratories, and one final year project, if I'm not wrong, right? But now, right from the very first year, the approach is totally changed. And that time it is study the subject, give some test uh, test examination if it is there in the during semester or end semester examination pass with the I mean first class distinction whatever and you get a job by doing some project in the final year but now right from the very first year the expectations are very high of the industry and accordingly the curriculum is designed so along with studying along with the studies in the classroom doing some practicals in the laboratories doing some major project, it is right from the first year project-based learning culture is being introduced in the curriculum in the form of mini projects, minor projects and minor major projects. And it is, it is expected that these projects are con converged to the publication, the patent, copyright, or some prototype. It's not that some project is prepared and uh, its report is submitted and end of it. No. That is not expectation nowadays. And students are doing wonder. Students are doing wonderful job. That's what my experience is. And as far as curriculum is concerned, whatever the points addressed in this national education policy, in the engineering curriculum, 80% things were addressed right from 2012 onwards in the various curriculum. We do, do talk many times. There is a gap between the industry requirements and what academia gives. But let me tell you, I mean, it's, uh, it's true in university system, true in IITs, true it in the NITs everywhere. The curriculum revise, revision happens every after four years. So we have revised curriculum in 2012. 
we don't revise all four years together. It's a progressively, first year 12, second year in 13, third year in 14 and final year in 16, progressively. Because we have to see the changes happening in the industry and that reflection has to be there in the curriculum. Then second cycle 16, then third cycle immediately in th after third year. So that happens. What I'm going to say, it's an outcome-based education as per the guidelines of National Assessment Accreditation Council or NBA. As per that curriculum is designed, as per the need of industry. Right now also as Dr. Devan said, see the curriculum of, I mean any branch of engineering, computer, IT, HTC, you will feel whatever is required in the industry, major component is there. When whatever the changes do happen in the industry, it's not possible to reflect immediately. But we do take care of that in a something beyond curriculum, in the form of guest lectures, seminars, industry connect. Only thing which, which was not addressed as far as NEP is concerned, that was some component of Indian knowledge system was not there in the curriculum and multidisciplinary approach. The, the student who is one is studying the computer engineering want to study something from mechanical. That component was not there indirectly. That is what is now NEP is suggesting. So the, bearing these two components, every component was taken care in the revision of engineering curriculum. Next point is about the uh, the uh, talk started with the discussion and what, why, why we are here today about the talent acquisition and uh, all these topics. We as Academicia wanted to have a dialogue with, wanted to connect with the industries. And academia, I mean industry people also wanted to come to the institutions, but efforts are not happening in that proportion. Right. With that, I mean, that, that, that is the problem. We are not talking we talk our language, academic language, you talk about industry language. You have your own problems, uh, the, the target lines of the completing the projects or maybe uh, the uh, finance part, profits, everything. We don't, talk, talk, we don't talk that language. We talk about academic language. Problem is here, we should talk each, one, each other's language. We should first of all talk, then understand and then come together and work together. I mean, it's not that I mean my institute will come to go to hundred institutions and have start working together. No, not required. Start with few a few industries. That's it. Already we have started. We are working with, but here it's not only large scale industries, but what we are talking about this MSMEs. Any my appeal to all these MSMEs, just approach engineering any engineering institute nearby you you are most welcome, any institute management or principal will welcome you like anything with a red carpet and just come up with the problem statements, come up with the avenue that we have so and so internship available to the students and the journey will start and journey will be, I will say, more successful. Thank you. I further feel that proper hand holding by the industries will be very beneficial for the students. And particularly if they decide in advance what career line they want to take up and which industry is suitable for them, probably that will be one of the starting points to have this kind of training programs or internships. Uh, Smita ma'am, what, what is your uh, view on this? Is uh, it a good idea? Yes. Uh, so ma'am, uh, when we are looking at uh, these training programs which you are discussing, so as already uh, Devin uh, uh, Shah sir spoke or Ukrande sir said, Already it is part of curriculum. Uh, so when we look at our management program, uh, it's a mandatory component of the curriculum that in between semester two and semester three, the students will be spending two months in the industry in order to understand that how industry operates. Because sitting in the classroom, uh, teaching them principles of management and financial management is not enough. Uh, biggest learning happens while you are doing it. Similarly, when we look at semester four, the way uh, management program structure is curated uh, at University of Mumbai is that there are only two teaching subjects in which the classroom interaction happens and remaining is all driven by projects. So we have three projects, which is general management project, functional area project, and a social sensitivity project where the students have to be on the field while they are working, maybe uh, doing it simultaneously because they might have got an offer from the industry already. So while they are working and executing those projects or they are taking up some live internship 
while they are getting, still no, in the process of getting the final offer. So internship is uh, definitely a great learning experience because without that we can't make industry ready students. But that is one aspect. One more thing which I like to add from the previous discussion and which is very important because each of us come from domains where we have had our own experiences. So one question was related to employability and which is a challenge for the industry. Please understand that's a bigger challenge for us. Because for you, uh, you are doing business in the context of business is profits. For us, we do not call what we do is not a business. Our context is that can we make students ready for whatever purpose they are pursuing that program. So for us, success is when the students finally are absorbed in the industry. And we take that as a challenge. So till every student from our campus doesn't get an offer or he or she doesn't come back and tell us that finally I have been able to do something, maybe my own venture, for us the journey is not over and we are very conscious of that responsibility. So how do we meet that responsibility is one, curriculum is there and there is a rigorous process, that is one. Another thing is we are having continuous interaction with the industry. So how do we interact? One is we invite industry on our campus. We do, in fact, industry driven uh, uh, summits. Say, for example, we are very, very active in conducting uh, industry driven summits. ISTD is our partner, NHRDN, NHRDN is our partner, uh, NIPM is our partner. Uh, we are also having MOUs with industry where we are executing for them their programs. Say, for example, MCX is our partner. Uh, so what we do is we try to get the industry on campus so that we can understand that what exactly are their pain points as well. Because while we talk to them, we, we understand their challenges, their requirements as well. And then we get back to our students and specifically alumni in that process. And we say that you are working with the industry and here we have raw students and we are getting this feedback and feelers from the industry. Can we do something about it? So can we, say for example, you coming over the weekend, run a workshop where this aspect is handled and so on and so forth. So we are very conscious of that responsibility. And then one more thing which you said is that with the implementation of NEP, there are issues which are emerging right. in terms of no um, uh, workload yeah, and infrastructure. Work. So uh, for that, again, unique approaches are needed. Uh, something which we have very clearly understood is that change will be happening. And this change is much needed because when we talk about the uh, approach of the curriculum, it has to be now multidisciplinary because markets are now no longer divided in silos. So a student who is studying a management program from my campus also needs to understand certain other disciplinary areas which might be required in the industry. So what we have done is, and which may not be possible for every institution, but uh, uh, NEP has uh, shown a way for that as well. So what we do on our campus is that we are integrating ourselves with other departments. See, for example, Department of German, we are offering a, within our curriculum their course okay. where students can learn uh, a foreign language. Hmm. Uh, we are uh, integrating our curriculum with Department of Philosophy where uh, students from our campus can understand yoga because uh, as Joshi sir spoke about, that the students are very different. So they can't take a stress. So how do you cope up? How, how do you manage yourself? Uh, how do you develop soft skills? We are taking care of all those aspects as well. So we are integrating with other departments in order to manage the difficulties we are having. Uh, so that is how we are evolving. And, and uh, uh, one thing you know, which I'll again like to repeat and which is in fact repeat of what Professor Ukrande said, that we want uh, uh, industry to connect. And, and let me assure you, we are not looking for large brands. And, I have very uh, clean clarity on this. Our students are also not necessarily pursuing big brands. We, we want companies which can give them the good working experience where there is learning taking place. So let me stop here. Time is limited. Yeah, thank you. But ma'am, don't you think, I mean, any one of this question is open for any one of you. 
that don't you think that there is a need to change the mindset of the students because whatever you are saying is true but most of the students i mean i would not uh, be able to put the percentage but most of the students still want to go for big industries and mnc's they are not willing to take uh, go to uh, um, smes so there is a need to change the mindset of the students so they, i feel there should be some structured efforts at the institutional level what can they be i mean uh, shah sir can you contribute something yeah i'll take just one minute and i'll pass on because this is something very very important okay. for us so uh, we have been doing counseling sessions with the students and we have been explaining to them ki please do not get uh, no uh, too bothered about the name of the company because uh, as i said what and we have been able to successfully do that we have been able to convince the students what matters most is the job description the job profile and nothing else because that is from where you are taking off i'll stop at that i'll pass it on to uh, devinsha sir <coughs> uh, 100% agree to smita madam सर टीसीएस में इंफोसिस में एक्सटेंशन में नहीं जाना है वहाँ बेंच में बैठना पड़ता है <laughs> यही है रियलिटी सो जॉब डिस्क्रिप्शन मैटर्स कैन आई टेक अनदर या यस यस प्लीज सी एमएसएमई वी हैव या सो वन मिनट एमएसएमई कम्स टू माय कैंपस उसके क्लासिक केस स्टडीज है सो व्हाट आर द पेन एरिया एंड व्हाट वी कैन ऑफर my internet bandwidth which is more than 1 gb is freely available from evening 5 to morning 9 you don't need to host anything on the servers cloud servers please host virtual machine on my machine when i purchase internet bandwidth i am getting 20 lakh ip address which is wasted so my in my college msme come and they have set up the entire system for the bitcoin investigation and dark web investigation in my campus and supporting all law enforcement agencies there is a case study please yes to uh, build a relationship with uh, msmes what we is now we have approached few industries in thane wagri state and uh, we have requested them to share their problems so one of the industries ashida electronics they have shared six of their problems in different uh, areas different functional areas and uh, what we have done we have formed a team of uh, sirs along with students so every problem is headed by a professor with a team of six students now when the students are exposed see it's all about today is all about experiencing something when you experience what is small scale industry or what is the kind of work or what is the learning you are going to have so when they experience that 3 4 months working with you know uh, one company like ashida electronics or pitambari products limited what they are also feeling that these are the places where their culture matches so it's also about cultural match value match so their their value matches so when their value matches uh, happens so probably their you no know, intensity to do, go to some high fi brand right okay so coming we are working in wagri state and we hope that uh, when we have more such companies to work uh, see a second important thing is even teachers need to understand yes smes and msmes see, currently you uh, know we have not uh, many opportunities there so unless and until teachers have exposures to uh, uh, those kind of environment probably we you know uh, we will be pushing students without knowing where they are going so my request is if there are uh, means we are not talking about any cost we are saying that you share your problems let our teachers solve free of cost let them experience let them experiment let us build the relationship only see i think in the last session there was something called trust deficit unless and until we build that trust things won't work we can you no know, have lot of uh, discussions and all but humko trust banana hai relationship banana hai aapko hum par vishwas karna hai humko aapke upar vishwas karna hai yadi vishwas ka hoga to mere khayal se bridge banega aisa mujhe lagta hai sure sure just a uh, last point to ponder over all this discussion i feel that there has to be a different set of behaviors required to work in sme and to work in mnc do you all agree to that and then how do you do you think a counselor on the campus can do this job or we ourselves are capable of doing it 
how do you inculcate a set of behaviors which are required for the M SMEs? So I have a different take. I think uh, we don't need a change in behavior. Whether you're working for MSME or whether you're working for a, a large company, uh, what is required is work ethics, uh, professional approach, and uh, complete commitment to whatever is the culture of the company. And the student is expected to evolve. Okay, And this is what we are trying to build on our campus. We are not trying to say, here the approach has to be different, here the approach has to be different. It has to be professionalism, which has to be at the paramount. And that, that is our effort. Uh, whatever I am, out of my own experience, see, I have worked with large companies. And I have also worked with small companies. The behavioral change which I felt is, when we work with a very large company, you, are, you have to work with their, in their system. So because they have a system, by their system. Uh, I feel uh, I, I need some freedom to work. I need uh, my creativity and creativity, creativity to be used. I want my innovation to be you know, explored. Uh, all these things, uh, when I work with a very large system, I don't get, because there are so many hierarchies in the system, that to break those hierarchy itself, I, I probably, uh, one life will be lost. So uh, that uh, opportunity I see uh, in uh, SMEs and MSMEs. Because there you have opportunity, you can approach the owner of the company, share your idea. And uh, most of the time in my own corporate world, when I wanted to meet very senior people, they always uh, asked for a big appointment and then wait time that they are always busy. I'm not saying they are uh, free, but uh, I think approachability itself is a challenge. So in the small SMEs, I think uh, this uh, approachability, these barriers are very small or can overcome these barriers. So these are fantastic opportunities. So if somebody is really a little adventurous, somebody wants to explore uh, his own potential, somebody wants to uh, be curious, curiosity, uh, creativity, innovation, all that, whatever we are talking about, I think uh, my uh, take is uh, these are the right platforms. Yeah. yeah I mean, Every, every student, the one who is admitted in the engineering college or professional college or any college, he wanted to I mean, have a very high profile job or a lucrative job with a high package. There's nothing wrong in that. Nothing wrong in that. And they, they work, they aspire and uh, they are in the beginning only when the placement starts. Uh, it's not that each and everyone gets the companies of their uh, choice. Dream companies, what we say, what they say, what we say. And as far as this, their uh, behavior is concerned, right from the first year, second year, third year, we, uh, uh, our faculty, our through counselors, we uh, conduct seminar, workshop, seminars and all that, we tell them about this, everything. But they listen and still their aspiration of the working in the MNCs, high package, lucrative package, air conditioned uh, I mean office job, and that's it. That, that's everyone's dream. But when actually the company come to the campus, when they face the interviews and they accordingly they get selected, everyone doesn't get selected, isn't it? I mean, there are I mean uh, hundreds and thousands of players, but how many gets placed in this uh, cricket 11 players or one day match or 2020 match? Hardly, isn't it? So uh, some students, got, I mean 10, 20, 30 percent students get placed in these MNCs. But during this process, when this two, three, four month passes, then they realize now what we have, it, is to, it was told by the faculty or counselors in second year, third year, now you should be ready for the job. I mean, the, uh, which is uh, fit to their culture, fit to their, I mean, the IQ level. Then this, uh, after three, four, five months, they come down and accept the job profiles. Fine, that is one. Now, uh, on this platform, let me appeal all this MSMEs to come to the, visit the college, visit the campus, talk to the principal, and right now I am, I assure you here only, as I worked as a Dean Faculty of Technology, I will connect at least four SMEs to one engineering college. Just, just come forward. And it's, I mean, every, every institute wants it. And what for two ways? One is offering the projects. 
okay have nda have mou offer the projects offer the problem statements and i'm sure the students of engineering or any professional course will complete the job what is offered to you project offered to you within the timeline given by you as per your requirement it's not that well, job and project is to be done for 6 months and your requirement is 2 months they will do it and second one is sec it's my experience i'm sharing with many institutes and my institute very specifically second one is uh, second one is about the internship see aict says ugc says all this regulatory body says internship has to be part of this the curriculum i said i'm using the word curriculum it's very important you may may or may not like curriculum is very important if curriculum is good delivery is good then outcome is going to be good right now if the internship is a part of curriculum if i make it internship compulsory in say semester semester 7 or semester 8 20000 students in mumbai also are this uh, mncs or large companies or smes ready to accept this in terms is it answer is no isn't it it's a major huge population and if i make it compulsory it's not possible to so we have to keep it option keep it in the internship during the four years course maybe 14 weeks or 12 weeks 16 weeks depending on as as per the pace whenever they get maybe doing summer internship winter winter internship one month each at my college we have started Come full semester internship, semester seven, three, four, five months, or semester eight, three, four, five months, six months, whatever. This year, out of six hundred, two eighty students got this uh, full semester internship. They will be going to the industry, doing the job, and they will get exposure. And this is the pipeline for placing the students for SMEs. I feel so. Working on projects and through this internship, if you have this, uh, I mean. Uh, coming together and working in this way things will surely change and uh, one more thing which uh, i would like to say it about the uh, at kj sumaya i mean right not sumaya institute sumaya vidyavar university is hosting one trio conclave it's a uh, bharat tech foundation it's a initiative i mean uh, is found by mr sridhar bembu you might have heard and now uh, government of india i mean bharat tech foundation and uh, this uh, regulatory body the iit and all those going to have two days conclave wherein smes industry r and d and academia are going to deliberate two days in panel discussion expert talks and two days and it's going to be come out with a concrete some proposal which will be submitted to government of india and we are expecting smes to be a part of this in the in the form of exhibition or whatever they will want as attendee as a delegate whatever so that is going to happen on 2nd and 3rd of april at somaya vidyagar university ghatkopra campus okay thank you very much thank you sir uh, there is a question i mean just I think we can take only one question yeah, yeah. because of the paucity of time. Please. Welcome to you all. This is Shubhendu uh, Shikhar, and uh, we do respect to all these panelists and all these learned SME who are here. Uh, I have worked in the capacity of director placement sales. I worked in the capacity of director HRD also, and I worked in corporation also in corporates also. My experience is that whatever Doshi sir said. i agree with him how many uh, faculties those who are responsible for getting the industry to the uh, institute are going to the industry itself this the, the the those who are responsible for placements they just sit in the colleges and they expect that industry should come to them or in the, or the colleges also they hold so many programs and then they call the industries for the industrial academia collaboration of things my my experience or my opinion is that those who are responsible for this placements they should go to the industry they should try to find out the problems they should try to understand the process yeah many of them may be going also and what i have heard that those who are responsible <laughs> those who are responsible those who are responsible for placements they are so overloaded they don't have time to go there 
but they should be for specialized people for those faculties or you can say about those you can courses they should go to the industry you should try to understand them and then then there will be a good collaboration right so what doshi sir has said i fully agree with him that even the faculty should also go there visit the industries try to understand them first then that, 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 there will be a good you can say uh, match and the trust building of these things so this is a good suggestion from mr doshi i thank you for that and i also seen as uh, mr uh, sir said that uh, how many students they get the job or they get that real you can say uh, internship so many people are sitting on bench and i also seen that uh, once somebody comes in the company and he just given some a very minor you can say work okay tum kar do bhai koi baat nahi hai hum tumko certificate de denge so he will not get that real experience so as the industry should also be serious to give them good opportunity to develop his or her you can say talent and the academia should also think very positively to reach to the industries also that's what i want to say thank you so much see uh, we we have discovered management students and engineering college students so i will compare our situation i am also an engineer stayed in hostel and all the story said so uh, my um, uh, you know uh, friend from my college only he joined medical college and within 18 months time he was behaving like doctor because he is working in the hospital likewise if bombay chamber will definitely support on this issue instead of you know bridging the gap who will go where and all so forget about that <coughs> engineering college extensions or new engineering college should come in the midst of midcs we'll speak to midc uh, subsidize hostels uh, subsidize uh, land for that and then every evening is a training center for them they can come to us we will develop definitely a kind of a, Uh, a room for them to you know explore ideas in new way and uh, it should be like that we have got proven example i mean why medical students are strong and you know confident so we'll discuss this over the coffee yes <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much all the fellow colleagues for having a very fruitful discussion on this topic and as it has very clearly come out there need to be efforts from the institutions as well as the industries the smes and lot of scope is there as suggested by some members here there is a scope for many activities let us all join our hands together and that will lead to better employment thank, thank you said much. by dr rajiv thank you to all the panelists for this enlightening discussion may i now request mr sandeep khosla to present the mementos to our panelists as a token of our appreciation <coughs> round of applause for all our panelists thank you sir